The Senate reconciliation bill moved one step closer to passing last night when Democrat Senator Kristen Sinema of Arizona indicated that she's on board after bargaining for concessions, one of which will provide a tax break for hedge fund managers. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says the bill will be introduced tomorrow and potentially passed tomorrow night. There are, of course, plenty of critics of the bill, including Senator Lindsey Graham, who had this to say. The Democratic Party has one play, tax and spend. You show me a group of Democrats in any room in America and they're thinking about ways to increase your taxes and spend your money, and it is not working. Now, this bill is being referred to as the Inflation Reduction Act, and it's ostensibly aimed at reducing inflation. Will it accomplish that goal? Joining us now to help us understand the economic impact of this plan is economist Stephen Moore. He's a senior fellow at FreedomWorks and a co-founder of the Committee to Unleash Prosperity. And I understand he's still about to join us. Oh, Stephen, it looks like we have him. Stephen, welcome back to the program. Thanks so much for having me. Sorry, we've got a big storm going on here. So I'm glad we were able to make the connection. We do. Those of us in Washington, D.C. can can hear the noise outside and, and we trust that the uh, power will remain on today. Um, <laughs> well, I hope so. You probably hear the thunder in the background, but uh, I, I can hear you loud and clear. Well, perhaps it's a foreboding sign of what's going to happen this weekend regarding the reconciliation package, which really just took pieces from the Build Back Better plan, it seems, and then grabbed some pieces from the Green New, Del New Deal, combined them we're calling them the Inflation Reduction Act in this combination. I'm actually a little bit surprised they didn't just call it the World Peace Act to really get the public behind it. But uh, Stephen Moore, will this actually reduce inflation like the title claims it will? Well, did the Affordable Care Act reduce health care costs? <laughs> of course it's not going to reduce inflation. And by the way, you don't have to believe me. Only uh, I saw a poll that uh, I think it was only like 15% of Americans believe this bill will reduce inflation. Most Americans are right. They have a good uh, kind of innate understanding of uh, economics that if you have a massive tax and spend bill, which this is an atrocious bill, there's nothing good in this bill. If you're a conservative, a free market person, uh, if you want America to be producing our energy, if you don't want the IRS harassing you, this is, this is just an absolutely dreadful piece of legislation. Shame on Joe Manchin for selling out his state of their, uh, West Virginia. It's going to hurt our coal industry. It's going to hurt our oil and gas industry. It's going to hurt our manufacturing industry. It hires 80,000 new IRS agents to harass uh, not just the general public, but they're going to they're going to weaponize the IRS just like they've weaponized the Justice Department and the FBI to go after conservatives and Republicans. So this is a dangerous bill. And right now, it looks like the Democrats are just going to lead the uh, economy right over this cliff with this bill. We'll find out tomorrow when the Senate starts debating. Well, Stephen Moore, you clearly are not a fan of this bill, but who wins if it's passed? Sorry, sorry say that again. Who wins if the bill is passed? Who benefits? Well, look, the bill is filled with taxes. I mean, they have a, a, a tax that will in, effectively hit all Americans. You know, remember their their uh, promise that they would only tax people who made less than $400,000. I mean, how many times did you say hear Joe Biden say that? Joe Manchin said that the other day. Pelosi said it the other day. It's a big, fat lie. Even the government's own numbers say that the uh, people making less than $200,000 will pay about $17 billion more taxes under this bill. That's How is that going to help our economy yeah. grow when we're in a recession? That's the other thing that makes me so angry. Yeah. And if I sound angry, I am, because this bill is so contrary to America's economic self-interest. Um, you don't ta raise taxes during a recession. It's that simple. You just don't do that. And that's what this bill does. And, you know, you go back to Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Joe Manchin, they all have said, oh, you never raise taxes during a recession, but that's exactly what they're doing with this bill. And Stephen, tell us a bit more about that. What kind of taxes are going to be raised on the average American family? Well, the biggest tax increase in this bill is the tax on American businesses. And we, we all want, as free market conservatives, to have a robust, vibrant, manufacturing sector here so that we don't have supply chain problems, so we're not dependent on China or Mexico or India or, 
for other countries. I'm, I'm, I'm for free trade. But we have to make sure that we are, you know, maintaining the necessary manufacturing base that made this country great. And this bill hammers our manufacturers. It and the number one industry that is negatively affected behind besides manufacturing is our uh, oil and gas industry and coal industry. So. I just find this to be anti-American. The biggest beneficiaries of this bill are, number one, the climate change industrial complex, which is now practically a trillion dollar industry that feeds off taxpayer dollars, and the Chinese. The Chinese are laughing behind our backs. They can't believe we're doing this to our own companies. Does this effectively undo the things that the Trump administration did to accelerate the manufacturing domestically? Unfortunately, yes. And I say that painfully because, as you know, I was a big part of, you know, helping write that tax plan uh, that cut our business tax rates so we could bring back a lot of manufacturing and a lot of capital from around the world and make things here in America. And that was, as you know, part of the whole Make America Great Again agenda and putting America first. This this bill puts America last. And it's it's just so frustrating because we created so many jobs under Trump. We created the best economy we've had, you know, at least since Reagan. And now you're right. Joe Biden is reversing those policies. And they don't care that it's going to hurt the lowest income people. You know, we just had a jobs report today, which is a pretty good number, except that the people who are really getting hammered by this inflation are the lowest income people. Inflation is now running at 9 percent. And according to the report today, wages are only growing by 5%. You do the math there, you see people are losing money every paycheck. And Stephen, let, let's talk about that because there was a jobs report number reported 500,000 new jobs. People look at that and say, that's great. It beat many expectations. But here's what Senator John Barrasso had to say uh, about that. Let's play clip one. And then I want to have you tell us if we should be optimistic or not. If you talk to families, they are having a harder and harder time keeping up. Because even if they're working, even if they got a bit of a raise, the raise has not kept up with the cost of inflation. And families in this country, in spite of what the president may have said, are falling further and further behind. And it's harder and harder to just keep up with where they were, certainly when he came.